Hey everybody, it's Brian here. Hope you're having a great day. I'm awake, are you? And if you're awake and you're watching the signs, you know something's big is about to happen. And boy, is it big. It's called the rapture of the church, the pre-tribulation rapture of the church at any moment. It could have happened a thousand years ago. It could have happened a hundred years ago. It could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. We're told it can happen at any moment. There's nothing that has to take place for that to happen prophetically. But we see the tribulation setting up with all the prophetic events every day that are going on in the news setting up right in front of us. And if the tribulation is about here, you know, the rapture's here. It's like I always say, you see them decorating for Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving's around the corner. And boy, Thanksgiving is actually around the corner for us in the U.S. And the rapture is too. It is very, very close. And we are about to fly. We're about to fly. Our bodies are about to change. This world's going to change forever and enter the worst time in human history. But the good news is today, for us born again believers who are here right now, we will not be here for that. We will be taken off this planet before that starts. I think that the catching away of the saints, the rapture will be the sudden destruction that will come upon them. Does that start the tribulation? No, I don't think that starts the tribulation. The peace treaty with Israel, signing a covenant for one week of seven years, that starts the seven year tribulation. We won't be here for that. We won't, we can have a glimpse of who the Antichrist might be, who he is, but we really won't know for sure. You know what? I don't really care who he is because I'm going to be with Jesus Christ up in heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb with you guys. <laughs> That's where I'm going to be. I don't care what goes on down here after that. I mean, I do care. Of course I care, but there's loved ones down here. But once we're raptured and we're in heaven at the throne of God and watching him break the seals that are causing the judgments on the earth, what a scene that is. And that whole thing that I just said is about to start. And we're going to look at an article today, just one article that um, is actually on, it was on, uh, where did I see this? On television, on a newscast. And I looked it up, and I'm going to talk about this. Uh, this, what I'm going to talk about, this article is scary. It really is. What what's out there? The technology that's out there, and it, it goes right along with scripture in the last days. And so, uh, let's look at this right now. Let's see if I pulled it up all right. Yeah, here it is. Okay, this is on. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't see the title. I see the article, but uh, privacy slash tech slash wearable. This is the uh, pod, this, excuse me the article, and it says right here. I'm not sure if that's the website, but once I read this, you'll you can look it up yourself. You know what you'll know what it is. It says college college students use meta smart glasses to dox people in real time. The project designed as a demo shows how easily existing tech can be misused and highlights how to protect yourself. Two Harvard students have created an eerie demo of how smart glasses can use facial recognition tech to instantly dox people's identities, phone numbers, and addresses. The most unsettling part of the demo uses current widely available technology like the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses and public databases. <clears throat> One of the two students posted a video showcasing the tech in action that was then picked up by a 404 media dubbed One X-Ray. The tech works by using the Meta Smart Glasses ability to live stream video on Instagram. A computer program then monitors that stream and uses AI to identify faces. Those photos are then fed into public bat databases to find names, addresses, phone numbers, and even relatives. The information is then fed back through a phone app. In the demo, you can see uh, one of the two students the other student behind the project uses the glasses to identify several classmates, their addresses and names of relatives in real time. Perhaps more chilling are the um, are also shown chatting up complete strangers on public transit. 
pretending as if they know them based on information gleaned from the tech. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just a guy from the 70s, okay? Born in the 50s, teenager in the 70s. I'm not a techie guy. But come on. The, you're wearing sunglasses. You're at the beach. You're at the mall. You're at a park. You're looking at people. You know their name, their addresses, where they live. Everything. You'll know everything about them. In, in a few in a in a few seconds, by wearing glasses, is this <clears throat> so? How what's this got to do with the end times, Brian? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> let's let's read what the scripture says here. Let's see. See, is this end times or not? Is this related to Bible prophecy? Let's see. Revelation 13, starting at verse 13. He performs great signs so that even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which he has given to him to perform in the presence of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who had the word, who had the wound of the sword and has come to life. And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many to do as do to not to worship the image of the beast and be killed who do not worship the image of the beast and be killed and because all the small and the great and the rich and the poor and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or their forehead and he provides that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark either the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. This passage has got a lot in it. Very famous passage, 13, Revelation 13, 13, 13, through the bottom of the 18, uh, verse 18. So this false prophet in the Antichrist, the false prophet does signs, calls down fire from heaven. Now, I used to think, and I still, it still could be, they actually call fire down from heaven or is this tech is this high tech some satellite up in orbit who knows but the technology is here to do it it says and it says um to make an image of the beast is that a holograph there's no cameras around nobody can see the camera it just appears this huge image just appears in front of millions of people is it ai we have the technology to do all this. This passage now could be done just, just with technology, not counting the supernatural. Okay, I'm not discounting supernatural powers from the enemy to do this. That's not my point. The point is we have technology now that can do this. I mean, they're talking about AI now. Like some of the people that you see on television now aren't even real people. You know that, right? They're AI. It was just on our local channel here in LA. Good Day LA, I think it's called Good Day LA, had a segment just an hour ago. And it showed this beautiful model. And she looked like a real person, but she wasn't. She was AI generated. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm like, why am I laughing? <laughs> Are we living in the last days? I say this every day. I'm a minor bird because I can't, I just, my little man brain is just like, uh, if if you're alive and breathing air and you're a born again believer and you don't think that we're in the last days, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> we're in the last days. We're in the end times. We're in the end of the age. Jesus is about to return. That's where we're at. That's really where we're at. Look at this technology. You wear sunglasses and Talk about um, identity theft. You just got to put sunglasses on. How about somebody puts sunglasses on, sees this person get into a Mercedes. Oh, they must have some money. Oh, you get a good look at them. You got their address, their phone number. You got everything about them. 
you can get up on their social media pages, know what they're doing. I mean, totally. I mean, come on. How easy is that? Wow. That's the times we're living. This is the times we're living in. You wear sunglasses and steal somebody's identity. That's scary. There are, I guess there are ways to defend against this. I haven't got into that article yet, but there are ways I suggest if you watch this video and you look this up, look this up in the ways you can protect yourself from these, these idiots out there that would do this. Because you know, you know this, if the two college kids has got this, what does the government have? Come on now, what does the US government or the governments of the world have? If two college kids can invent this, what do they have? Now, okay, here goes Mr. Brian conspiracy. There's a part of me that you've never, I've never talked about too much. There's a lot of stuff that I hold back on this channel because I want to focus on the Lord. And it's not bad stuff. It's just a harp. You've heard of harp. Harp is basically a huge antenna system. They have several of these all over the world. They shoot microwaves and beams up in the satellites, bounce them down into the earth, into the ground or into cloud formations. They can manipulate the weather DEW, direct energy weapon. Some people think that's what caused the fires in Maui, in Lahaina, Maui. Um, pretty good chance I think it was too. There's so much tech out there, the guys. What you see on the shelf of the stores is not what they really have. It's just be real here. There's the conspiracy people had it right. <laughs> okay, they did. They have it right. Most of it, not all of it, but a lot of it. Not all of it, but a lot of it. CERN, the Hydrogen Collider. They're opening up portals into other dimensions. They're they're and they're blatant talking about it. They're sending mat. They're bringing matter and antimatter back and forth between a portal between another dimension. Are dimensions real? Yes, yeah, dimensions are real. We live in a dimension right here, right now. Is heaven in another dimension? Yes. Einstein said there was at least 11 dimensions. Is there? I don't know. I'm not Einstein, that's for sure. <laughs> Good job, Einstein. And, but heaven's another dimension. We just can't see it. But soon we're going to see it because we're going to have glorified bodies and we're going to be able to go to heaven during the millennium and be back and forth between the earth. There's so much they've lied to us about over the hundreds of years. They have lied so much and not told us so much that's really going on. Why would they do that? Why would they keep all this information? Because, well, people would freak out or people would try to take that technology for themselves. Uh, the biggest thing is, I think, is control. They want to control us. Hence, 2020. I always bring that up. If you can get anything that happened in 2020, one word describes 2020 to me, control. They wanted to see if it would work. And you know what? It worked pretty much. Would it work again? I don't think so. Not at least in that form. This is the time we're living in. Deception, manipulation, all over the place. And this technology the things that the world has, it could easily, in this passage here, do these things without having, it's coming from demonic powers out of heaven. God can do this. He did on Mount Carmel. Fire came down out of heaven, Mount Carmel. Burned up the sacrifice with Elijah and the prophets of Baal. So God, God's got the power to do this. Does the devil? Yeah, he, yeah, I say he does. Do they need his power to do this? They could use it. Or they don't have to. They have this. I mean, they they can do a fake alien invasion and would you think it's real? Are aliens real? There's no such thing as extraterrestrials. They're called interdimensional demons. Go back and forth between two dimensions. They're liars. They're deceivers. And they're, and they're working with Satan to prepare the world for the Antichrist. This is the times we're living in. But it really is. I could really get a lot more into this stuff. I used to do another podcast with another guy on Rumble. We talk about this all the time.
So you can wear sunglasses and know everything about somebody by wearing sunglasses. Um, I don't even know where to go from here. This is the truth. Everything, everything we're living in, <clears throat> this world system, I shouldn't say everything is a blanket statement, but this world system that we live in is designed for deception. It's all set up for deception. Who's the prince in the power of the air? Satan is. The airwaves. All this tech. A lot of this tech is used for good. I'm using my iPhone to talk to you about the soon coming of our Lord. So that's good. But a lot of this tech is used for bad. Like, like the movies that we've seen over the last 50 years. All basically brainwashing us, preparing us, the masses, for the, the big lie that's going to come after the rapture. I believe that lie is going to be aliens. It seems pretty obvious. And they've been preparing us for this for 50 years. Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, all these movies, Terminator, things like that. They, they, they have deliberately prepared us. The governments of the world know about this technologies. They know about the Nephilim. They don't call them Nephilim. They call them by other names. Genesis 6. The Nephilim. Men of renown. And they survived after the flood, the scripture says. Are they here now? Yeah. God's holding, God's literally holding everything at bay. There's a dome of protection over the world. The world will only go so far and God stops it because God has a plan and God's not going to allow the world to go any further than it can until this plan is completed. He has a, he has a stop on our own life. As a believer, God will only allow to walk away from him so far. It doesn't mean you lose your salvation. And when you get to the point where God says, that's enough, he'll draw you back into himself, the prodigal. He has the same thing with the world system. They can do all this stuff. That's why we're not here for Armageddon. God, uh, God is holding Armageddon at bay for us. That's why he's doing it. Everything's being held down compared to what it could be. If God just took his restraint off, okay, let's just say we're still here, rapture hasn't happened, and God took a sovereign restraint off mankind, we wouldn't be here another month. The enemy would go berserk, go cray cray. The leaders of this world, some of them would just start pushing buttons. But God is holding everything back by the word of his power on purpose because the church is here. There is technologies out there that would blow your mind. They're only showing us what they want us to see. We're being surveilled all over the world, from the sky, every day, every country. Not just the satellites. Brian, you're going cray cray this morning. <laughs> I'm not cray cray. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, as a brother in the Lord, there is things going on that, that they told you you wouldn't believe it. And it's all part of the end times. And this technology that's out there that they're hiding from us, they're showing us a little bit of it. When we're gone, that technology will come out in full force to be to be used to control the masses. You can run out into the deserts of uh, California, in the mountains of Nevada, Sierra Nevadas, to hide from these cray cray people during the tribulation. But if they really want to find it, it's not an issue. They can find you. And they could take you out. This is the times we're living. 
I'm going in this direction because it's not, it's talked about a little bit on the, on, on YouTube. Obviously there's channels that talk a lot about this. I don't talk a lot about it because I don't want to give credence to this stuff. I want to talk about the Lord and his return for us. But folks, things are not what they seem. That's why it says in the last days to be sober-minded, sober of spirit, sober-minded. Why Why does it say that? So you will know what the will of God is for your life. Well, why wouldn't you know the will? Because your head's going to be full of all this stuff. Televisions, movies. How about 5G? I've never even got into 5G yet. <laughs> That's another whole thing. There's so much going on bombarding us. That's why be sober-minded, sober in spirit to know what the will of God is so you can pray. You can discern what's going on in the world. Why do you want to discern? You want to discern so you don't want to be scared. There's nothing to be scared of. All this stuff that's happening is supposed to happen exactly like God wants it to happen. And when he's using the world leaders as pawns, he's using this world system to show his glory and power. And soon the rapture is going to happen. We're going to be taken off this planet and the God's going to release his wrath upon this world. That's what's about to go on. That's what's, that's reality. That's not fake news. And you guys know this, you know it, and you feel it every day. I've said it yesterday. The closer we get to the rapture, the more I can feel what God is doing in this world. He's moving everything around, even in our own lives. That's why today, if you don't know the Lord, you need to ask him in your heart right now. You need to get saved right now because there's not much time left. You need to ask Jesus in your life. He died, buried, and rose again on the third day. His blood and body and sacrifice, what he did 2,000 years ago, is for you. It was for me. God wants us to go to heaven and be with him. But he's giving you an opportunity right now to receive him into your life. Ask him into your life right now. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Yesterday's gone. It's today. You're listening to this or watching this. You may just like, I'm a crackpot. You, you're going to comment. You're a false teacher or a false prophet. You're this, you're that. That's fine. That's fine. Nothing I haven't heard already. But the problem, the thing is not the problem. Well, it is a problem. If you die, you're going to be in hell. That's the reality. You need to ask him in your life right now, in your heart, have faith and ask him to come into your heart to be your Savior and Lord right now. And for us born again believers, we're just, we're just living and waiting for the trumpet. Waiting for that trumpet. What's that going to sound like? I think it's going to be a note. I'm not a music guy, but you guys out there know music. You know all the notes and all, all that. I don't know nothing. But I got a feeling that trumpet blast will be a note that you've never heard before. That's just my guess. And it's almost there. And in Revelation 13, uh, 13, 16, and that part down, they're going to use the technology to control people, to track them, to bring fire down from the sky, to make a, an image speak. All that's here now. That wasn't here a hundred years ago. It's here right now. Amongst with everything else going on. I don't know what else to say. I haven't already said. I love you guys. Our redemption is drawing so nigh. Rejoice in this day. You're alive today. Rejoice. It says there's there's um, sorrow at night, but joy comes in the morning. So enjoy this day wherever you are at in this world that God has made. And God has something for you and for I, my, myself, to do today. But just live this day. Take pressure off yourself. Don't beat yourself up. And just enjoy this day. Because this is the day the Lord has mad. Rejoice and be glad in it. I'll see you in the clouds. This is your brother Brian out. Bye-bye.